what we're beginning to understand more and more is that patients will have very different variable treatment courses if you give them the same therapy. And biomarkers have become very important to understand how can we prognosticate or predict how someone will respond to a treatment. Right now, we typically have been using biomarkers looking specifically at the tumor expression of genes or RNA expression. But we know the tumor itself is just one small part of sort of the whole milieu of how a tumor interacts with the host. And the tumor microenvironment or sort of the surrounding tissue, we're now be beginning to understand how, how important that interaction between tumor and microenvironment is. And the microenvironment can even be broken up into subsets like the immune microenvironment, which is what we really looked at in this, in this study. So the rationale there was to essentially look beyond the typical biomarkers of the tumor itself into the more broader scope of the systemic uh, tumor environment. So our interest were, was to look at the impact of the tumor immune microenvironment in patients being treated with what we call trimodality therapy, um, which includes chemoradiation. And these were two prospective trials treating patients with bladder cancer, muscle invasive bladder cancer with chemoradiation. And so that's why we specifically focus on these two clinical trials. So what we found was that um, an RNA-based uh, expression profile that correlates with T-cell infiltration and T-cell activation in the, in the microenvironment, as well as interferon gamma signaling, which are essentially two um, uh, markers of immune activation, was strongly associated with improved survival in patients treated with chemoradiation for muscle-invasive bladder cancer. You know, I think the other thing that was interesting that we found was there's just a very wide range of, um, more broadly speaking, immune cell infiltration between patients with bladder cancer. And hopefully in the future, what we'll be able to better understand is um, what's the significance of this as we integrate new therapies. For example, there's an ongoing SWOG study that's integrating immunotherapy into the treatment of bladder cancer in patients who are getting chemoradiation. And so you could imagine that patients with a higher infiltrate might be primed to respond even better to adjuvant immunotherapy. And so in the future, hopefully we're going to be able to better understand um, the impact of this really wide variation of uh, immune cell populations within the microenvironment in patients with bladder cancer. So we can definitely do better in treating patients who have bladder cancer. And um, the next step would be to integrate or assess how the role of immunotherapy adjuvantly in patients who are treating with, treated with uh, trimodality therapy with chemoradiation. And so that's an ongoing accruing SWOG study. And so hopefully in the next couple of years, we'll understand if there's a benefit to adding immunotherapy in the treatment of these patients. And we can take some of these results, these secondary analyses, uh, these biomarker correlatives, and now even be more specific about how should we choose a specific treatment for each patient? Because right now, the two ways that we can treat bladder cancer are with surgery as a main modality or radiation. And they've never been compared head to head in a, in a randomized trial and probably never will. And so we need to understand which patients would benefit more from surgery, which patients would benefit more from radiation so that we can really personalize care in the future.